the J is pronounced like a Y. All right, so for a while now, we have made a couple of different kill you brews, and our Finnish friends and a couple other people have pointed out that they were not, in fact, kill you. I don't know why I'm holding this. And they would be right. Kill you is really just sugar, water, yeast. Now, I hope I don't make them angry again, but we're going to break the rules a little bit as we make this one. I'll explain more as we go. To start with, we're going to use two pounds of white sugar poured through a funnel into this fermenter. Yes, that is a lot of sugar, but this should make like a 13 to 14 percent or so alcohol ABV brew. And I hope I can pour this without getting everywhere. There's nothing worse than the only thing worse than sugar everywhere is sand. Okay, that didn't work so good. So I'm going to have to spoon it one by one because it was my idea to use this big Pyrex. This may take a while. Yes, I'm aware there's probably a better way to do this. But you know what? We didn't think of it at the time. We're just trying to get this in here. So as we were doing that, I, I said something to the camera. And I said, I like those little fourth wall breaks. And then I realized, wait a minute, our entire video is fourth wall. There's no third wall. There's no first or second wall. It's just fourth wall. You're the fourth wall. Anyway, I mean, you know, the things you think of when you're pouring sugar, you know? Anyway, so we have our two pounds minus a few grains of sugar. I'm gonna call it good enough. Next, I wanna pour in some water. This water is above blood temperature, so it feels warm. It's a good thing too, because you wanna melt that sugar. Well, dissolve, it's not really melt. We're gonna fill it about halfway and hopefully not spill it all over the place. She went to get the funnel and I said, hey, I could pour it. That's why we have this fancy pitcher with the fancy little spout, you know? I think I'm doing all right. Spilled less water than I did sugar. Okay, now that I got it there, we get the solid bung, also known as my thumb saver bung. By the way, in case we haven't mentioned it, everything that you see here has been sanitized in. The red bucket of sanitization. We weren't ready, were you? I was trying to draw up oh, okay. dry the we, sanitization. We can do that again. It's fine. No, we'll do it again. It's awesome. It's perfect. We're going to do it again. <laughs> so this is my thumb saver bung. It's just a solid bung. By the way, everything here has been sanitized in. The red bucket of sanitization. That's when she keeps reaching over there and I keep making a cut. That's what she's doing. She's getting stuff out of there. So I use the solid bung for mixing because that way the hole doesn't like poke in your thumb. <laughs> That's awesome. That happens sometimes too, you know, because pressure differential from the heat and all that. But anyway, at this point, you want to mix it up. That's why I filled this about halfway. And uh, you just want to, you know, shake the bejesus out of it. Mix all that sugar in. Make sure there's no sugar left. It shouldn't be hard if you use warm water. And be careful because your bung might bounce and spit at you. I'm just checking to see if I got it all. A mm, little bit more. General rule of thumb. Shake until you think you're done. I think it was like two more minutes. Now, in the very beginning of fermentation, it's totally okay to get some air in there. You actually want to because the yeast colony needs oxygen in order to build. So it's totally a good thing. The next ingredient, and this is where I'm going to stray slightly from the Finnish tradition at colleges and universities everywhere of making this brew. I'm going to add yeast nutrient, and it's going to come in the form of Fermaid O, 2.5 grams with a little bit of water. Why am I breaking tradition? Well, because there's like nothing in sugar that yeast really want to eat other than sugar. So there's no nutrients, there's no minerals, there's nothing there for them. It's even less nutrient rich than honey. So yeah, you want to use yeast nutrient or you risk stalling. I want this to ferment completely out because we have plans. Oh yeah, <laughs> we have plans for this. So, yeast nutrient in. More water. Do you want to use a funnel or are you still going to? I'm, I'm going to brave the pouring. Takes a very steady hand. Don't touch the sides. It's at this point that you need to decide just how greedy do you want to be. Because if you go too far up and it foams, it'll all end up in your airlock making a mess. If you don't put in enough, you get less brew. <sighs> Decisions. Four. You heard it. Feeling pretty greedy. So we're going about there. 
Now, now I, you have to mix some more. I need to mix some more because if I take a reading right now, it's probably gonna be wrong and make me go <gasps> and I'll start sweating, get nervous, and that's just not a good look for me. <laughs> so instead, I'm going to mix the stuff. There we go. Oop, I, it's like waviness in there. That is totally gonna spit. And now we want to take a gravity reading so that we know about where it started. Before you do that, why don't you grab a piece of paper? So I you should can use a notes. piece of paper so I can take notes. That is important. If you're a new brewer, or even an experienced brewer. Pieces of paper and pen are your friend. Believe it or not, I take notes on everything I do now. I had to say that because I didn't used to. I'll remember. Now. So we used two pounds of sugar. 2.5 grams of Fermade O. It's Fermade O. There's a dash in it. There's a dash or is a space? It's a dash. Okay. Yeah, not the dash. It, there's a dash. The way I say things, people think I'm saying Fermade O, like, <laughs> A tornado with a, without a D, I don't understand, but okay. And then water to a gallon. I'm gonna put the date on there somewhere. Probably need the date on here too. That's why there's two of us. She has the brain today. Okay, then I'm gonna take a hydrometer reading. Now, hydrometer reads specific gravity. It can give you an approximate idea of what the alcohol content in your brew is. It also tells you if you're way off your starting idea or if you're close to it. We know that sugar is 0 0.046 points or Point, yeah, 0 0.046 specific gravity per pound in a gallon. And if you don't know that, we have videos on that. Derrica will link in the, in the below to the video that talks about that. So two times 46 is actually going to be 92. So that be, should be 0 0.092 for my initial gravity. Let's see how close I am. I'm betting you it's lower because I think I put it more than a gallon. I'm going to say it's 0 0.088. That's one point. Here. Yeah, 1.088, because water is one, so anything you add on top of that makes it higher than one. But I didn't taste this, so I don't know. That's just a random guess. Pretty darn good one, 1.092. <laughs> Okay, so 1.092 is our starting gravity, which means we're going to make somewhere in the range of about 13% alcohol if this ferments out dry, which it should. The yeast we're using should go to 16% for its tolerance which I haven't talked about yet, but I'll get to in just a second. If you did not sanitize everything, don't do what I just did. But if you did sanitize, you can totally just pour it right back in there because, you know, why waste it? Today, we're going to be using Red Star Premier Blanc yeast. This is good for just making dry, full-bodied whites and red wines. Um, it's a good all-around yeast is basically what they're saying. It goes to about 16% alcohol tolerance. But as we all know, if you've watched our show, yeast can't read. So I'm playing it safe, going to 13% because I want this to come out dry because, as I said, we have plants. I, you know, that time wasn't even faked. I forgot. <laughs> but, I am, but Drew, one of our VIPs, sent me a lovely pair of Fiskars left-handed scissors, which in is red. in red, too. But what's, what's kind of ironic is I actually usually, Julie Tardos noticed I usually cut with my right hand. I'm actually kind of ambidextrous. I'm mostly left centric. Today, I'm gonna to use my left. They're sharp, see, it works. Yes, I'm a little excited about scissors, okay? <laughs> when you get older, you know, <laughs> funny things. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, so how much of this am I gonna use the whole thing? Because why not? Actually, there's a good reason. It's because we have found that in must that might have a problem. This is a must, by the way, because we're making a wine. It's a sugar wine, you know, it's wine. Um, in musts of this type that don't have a lot of things for the yeast to eat on, the more yeast you give it, the better the chance the colony can build up nice and strong. Half packet versus a packet of yeast, the cost isn't that much different, really. So we err on the side of, eh, if it works, overdo it. You know, kind of like Adam Savage. Also, yeasts have cannibalistic characteristics, so yeah. if they get hungry and they're not finding what they're wanting in our solution, they might munch on their neighbors and be just fine. Or if enough of them get overwhelmed and they're just not producing, the live ones are going to, you know, go to town. So, what's next? You want to do a swirl or you're good to go? I am not going to do a swirl because every time I do a swirl, see, there's already some. They're, they're floating out. They get stuck to the sides and then they can't fulfill their destiny and it's just not good. So I just let them fall in and they'll start up on their own, but I do need a bung and an airlock. Alrighty. All right. So bung and airlock. We like the S-type. The three piece is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Probably going to have to put a rubber band on this one. It's just not, it's not staying. 
<laughs> See, you want it to have a good seal. Because if it doesn't have a good seal, then it, you don't get to watch it go bloop, 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 you know? And that's like, why else do you want an airlock, you know? <laughs> Actually, here's why you want an airlock. Because it works like a one-way valve. It lets the gases from fermentation get out. If you do not have some way for those gases to get out, they get out any way they can, which is usually to go boom. You don't want boom. Boom, bad, no good. Big, bad, a boom. I was waiting for it. I knew she was going to do it. I was, I was trying not to smile as she did it, but I did it anyway. Okay. But it also does something else. It prevents things from coming back in. Bacteria, any, any kind of an infection or something that could be bad for your brew, and fruit flies. They will go nuts for anything with honey and fruits and things like that. The sugar water, maybe not as much, but still good to have. So what are we going to do with this now? We're going to let it sit. On a tray. Preferably something with a lip for the first couple days, just in case it gets a little overly ambitious and foams up into the airlock and makes a mess. That way it doesn't make a mess on the kitchen. It makes a mess on the tray. And then once it's done with that and cools down a little bit, we're going to put it in the fermentation station for probably a week or two. Let it finish out and we see no more real activity in there. We'll be back with you to take a reading and show you how it's doing. It's been 12 days. It looks like it may have slowed down a lot. It still bubbles every now and then, but I don't know if that's degassing or what it is. And we can sit here and look at it all day and not know. Or we can just open it up, take a reading, and find out. Now, I don't recommend taking readings willy-nilly. You know, you shouldn't be capricious in your reading taking. You should only take it, you know, when it's appropriate to. Because if you do it, like, every day, you're putting a big risk of oxidation. So if you don't take it willy-nilly, do you take it nilly-willy? Yes. I guess. There's a good chance that this can stall. So that's something I am watching for because, I mean, it started at 1.092 and it's just a sugar wash. There's like nothing in it. So there's a chance it could happen. And it probably did. Very gassy. Yep. I'm going to wait for some of those gases to come out because they will actually throw off your reading a little. So, so this is something that I've learned about working with Kill You. We put Fermate in here. We put yeast nutrient in. We did two pounds of sugar. It's a 1.092 gravity, but it's sitting at 1.054. This thing stalled and it stalled hard. I don't know if that is like by intent that they stall people, you know, like somebody that's from Finland, please tell me. Do they always come out sweet? <laughs> because we've done a couple of kill yous and they almost always stall. Yeah. So uh, right now, 1.054, I am going to do our first round of fix for how we fix a stall. So be right back to show you that. All right, so our first round of defense usually is just stirred up real good. Well, we're going to do first and second line of defense today, and that is yeast holes. Some people use yeast holes as a nutrient. We've actually tested that. They don't work that great as a nutrient. They're better than nothing, but they're not a great source of nitrogen. But so, something that we've noticed they do work well at is fixing Fixing stalls. a stove. I don't know the science behind it, but I know that yeast are rather like headhunters. What's the word? Cannibalistic. <laughs> yeah, that. So they will feed on their dead brethren and make a meal of it and that will my microphone just totally fell look at this do you need new tape i'm gonna stick it right here <laughs> be transparent there you don't see this <laughs> okay it's usually inside the shirt anyway so they will feed on their dead brethren and sometimes can restart a stuck fermentation. So what I want to do is just give this a good mix. And I don't have the lid on or anything because there's a lot of gas in here right now. I can hear it. You can see it. It's yeah. foaming up. Hear that? Here, wait. This is an advantage. Hear that? There we go. See? That's why I did that. Okay, but what I want to do is mix it up real good. I want all the leaves off the bottom, get everything back up into the liquid, give it the best chance we can. That is the first and second round of what you do for a stuck fermentation. Normally, you know what? Let's get out the uh, salad bung and go from there. Oh, really? I'll hold this. Oh yeah, we're gonna shake this, shake the bejesus back out of this. Alrighty then. Okay, I'm just gonna use a solid bung and stick it in there. I'm gonna shake this up now. I know it's bound to be somewhat explosive when I remove that, so I'm not going to go too far with it. See, you know, careful, control, <laughs> pop. 
Get all that off the bottom, or uh, quite a bit of it, and degas this pretty well. Now, the reason why Brian is going ahead and doing this, even though he knows there is a small amount of alcohol that's already present in the brew, is because of how gassy we saw it was. Oh, yeah. You know, there's tons of gas in there. Is there a risk of oxidizing? Yeah, of course there is. Anytime you open it, there's a risk, but because CO2 is heavier than oxygen and this is just degassing like crazy, it should be pushing the oxygen out. So I don't think any is getting really forced into this. I'm mixing it up real good because, well, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You know, homebrew is not without its risks. And that'll sit there and bubble for like an hour now. But anyway, I'm going to continue to degas this until it's pretty much not foaming anymore. Then we'll put the airlock back on, put it back in the fermentation station. Words are just not coming to me today. We'll put it back in the fermentation station and give it like another week or two, and then we'll check on it. So it's been another week. Let's see how this is doing. When we last saw it, it was at 1.054, and we determined that it was probably a stall. That's only about 40 points of gravity used up, which is not really good. It's not awe-inspiring. Puts it to like a 6% ABV or so, which is not where we want it. It's also incredibly sweet right now. Okay, it looks like it moved two points since the last time that we looked at this. So that leaves us with fewer options. Because there's alcohol in here already, adding a brand new yeast might be the answer, but it's going to have a tougher time because there's already some alcohol present. I'm not against giving it one last shot, adding some fresh yeast and seeing what happens. While Derica went to get the yeast, I've been degassing this and I'm finding it is incredibly gassy, which that can stall or retard fermentation as well. Now, we all know that white sugar just doesn't have a lot for yeast to grab onto. We put in yeast hulls, we put in yeast nutrient. I don't wanna add anything else to this because it should just work. <laughs> so, when in doubt, what do we do? Get out the beast. That's right, 71B, also known as 71 Beast. It's worked really well for us in the past. It's a pretty strong yeast. It's not supposed to be as high as Premier Blanc, like we used in this, which is 18%, but it's been a really good performer. And I think different yeasts work differently in different environments. Our environment is a little on the warm side. Premier Blanc might not like that. 71B, we know, does. So I'm gonna put in a whole packet, not even gonna take any chances. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We know. Don't think of it as a failure. Think of it as a learning experience. Get in there. Whack the packet. Got to do that. It's very important. They all must achieve their destiny, which is to ferment this kill you. So I was going to degas this more, but I know all I'm going to do is get yeast stuck to the sides. So instead, I'm just going to put the airlock back on, hold it down with a rubber band. This is our handy dandy rubber band trick. You just put it right on the edge here, wrap around the handle, done. And if you, if you have one of those nice European bottles that have the handles on both sides, you can double. Yeah, you could do two rubber bands because that's necessary. Hey, look, it's already bubbling. See that? It worked. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> that's that's just degassing, okay? <laughs> But we are going to put this back in the fermentation station, give it another week, maybe two, and we'll see how it goes. Okay. The problem child was put on a heating mat yes. that she uses for starting seeds and stuff. Should have kept it around 85 degrees. I don't know that it fully heated the, the brew itself, but I did see what looked like activity in the airlock. Eh, let's find out. It actually moved by four points. So... That tells me it is actually fermenting. Just very slowly. Very slowly. So what we're gonna do with this now is I'm going to use my immersion circulator as a, I don't know if this will work. I wanna put it to like 95 degrees Fahrenheit just to get it going and see if that works. So we're gonna treat it like we're going to pasteurize, but the temperature is going to be way lower. 95 degrees, maybe even 90. We'll do 90. 90. 90 might be just right because I believe the yeast can still do 90 degrees as its normal range. <sighs> desperate times, desperate measures. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So let me just pour the sample back in, put the airlock back on, and literally what I'm going to do is put it in a pot of water with an immersion circulator or a sous vide and put the temperature to 90 degrees. I think ours will do 90. That should, that should be a thing, right? We'll find out. And 
let that go for a few days, see if we start seeing more activity, see if I can see any more bubbles coming up the sides. I see tiny, tiny little bubbles coming up the sides, but not enough, making me think the yeast is struggling really bad. I'm not sure exactly why. We gave it some stuff to work with. I, but hey, it's sugar. There's nothing else in it. If you ever needed proof that sugar was just empty calories, right there. <laughs> but anyway, let's get that done and we'll be back to show you what it did. Okay, well, guess what? It worked. Our Instant Pot actually goes down to 90 degrees. I just have it sitting in the steamer filled with water just to hold it off the bottom because these will scorch the bottom and that could break the container. So I just have it set to 90 degrees. It's going for 24 hours, but um, we'll see how it goes after that. All right, this has been sitting for two weeks. It was in the Instant Pot on the sous vide function at what, like 85 or 90 degrees or something like that for a couple of days. We started seeing more activity. I took it out of there. It's been sitting. <sighs> Time to check it again. <laughs> It is fermenting. It is obvious that something is going on here because we Doing see something. all the signs. It just seems to be taking its sweet old time. And She's very kind about it. That has been annoying to us. It's at 1.030. Well, so it, it went down 18 points. It's something, so that's good. <laughs> Give it a swirl without the airlock on because I don't want bubbles to go everywhere. And all I'm doing is trying to get everything active again all the stuff in there, degas it a little bit. Just kind of trying to give the yeast a chance. There's only so much more we can do. As you can see, it's gassy. It's gassy. If I put this back on, ta-da! Yeah, it's gassy. Which is a good sign because that means the yeasts are creating gas. And if they're creating gas, they're creating alcohol. Yeah, this has now been going for five weeks. This is highly unusual in our experience, but hey, we're gonna see this through. <laughs> So see you in another week or two when it seems to do more. <laughs> okay, so it's been like oh, almost three weeks, two and a half weeks since we looked at this thing last. And it was sitting at 1.030, but it was on the steady decline. It was going down. So let's see what it did. It dropped considerably though. Oh, good. 1.020 now. It still seems really slow it for that. It really amount. does. This has been fermenting now for almost a month. In five days, it'll be a month. And you're- Oh wait, no. In five days, it'll be two months. Not one month, And you're supposed months. to drink this young. Like it's supposed yeah. to be like- Yeah, like this should have been gone already. This should have been drank. So- I'm thinking a lot of the time they might drink it non done. Like it might still be really sweet, but- Sure, and that might make it more enjoyable, so- yeah. but we're gonna put this aside for another week, see what it does. Okay, so it's been another couple of weeks. It looks as though the airlock has neutralized. Like, it's even degassed and everything. I don't see any bubbles. It has cleared significantly, and it's made this lovely, like, moonscape oh, yeah. yeast cake on the bottom. So we're hopeful. Who knows? The way this thing's gone, you know. <laughs> but hey, you know, this is what our channel's about. We like teaching. So when things don't go exactly as expected, we don't see that as, oh, we can't show that. We see it more as, here's an opportunity, you know? So good or bad, that's what, look at how clear that is. Oh, it's yeah. like water that's when you get, crazy. yep. Alrighty, so last time it was sitting at 1.020. It is still sitting at 1.020. So. It's done. It's, it's as done <laughs> as it's gonna be. I'm not gonna make it do no more. <laughs> However, I am gonna put this back because I wasn't prepared for that. So we have the do next I, part of this video. Do you wanna taste it? I know you don't want to taste it, but should I'm we I'm gonna taste dump it? most of this in and then we will taste it. We have a special tasting coming up for this brew. So we weren't ready to do that today. That's that's good for a taste. We're gonna be all scientific about it. <laughs> now I forget, traditionally, do they always flavor it? They, they so tend to, that's why we're gonna do that. This started at 1.092. Hmm. 1.020 is the finishing gravity. Um, times 135. This is like almost 10%. It's like 9.7%. It's not bad. Yeah. With that amount of sweetness, it actually came out okay. Yeah. It's sugar wine. I mean, it's not overly complex and flavorful. No. But it's not bad. But I've certainly tasted more. Yeah, like considering how much sugar. trouble we had getting it here, I thought this was going to have stressed off flavors. No, you know. no. Nope, not, not really at all. It's actually uh, kind of pleasant. Though it can be better. And we'll do that coming up in about two seconds for you. <laughs>
No, we're not just wearing the same clothes two weeks later. It's really only been a few minutes, but we realized, hey, we could rack this today, and then we don't lose another week to it. So we're just going to rack it. Now, ideally, we would have wanted to come to that conclusion before... Before I poured it in. Yeah. But it'll settle. It's okay. So we are going to go to a uh, wide mouth one gallon, because if you look at this, see, there's a little bit of headroom here. Okay. Now, the oxidation thing gets wildly blown out of proportion. It's basically just... Be aware of it. Do the best you can, but don't like, don't have that fear of taking action. I forget what that's called. There's a word. There's a word that I can't think of right now. Somebody will tell me. But I know when we rack this, there'll be even less. So if I put it back into the same container, I'll have more headroom. Okay. So we're going to put it in this because it's a little bit of a smaller container. Believe it or not, it is. Okay. We did a test them. Yeah. These hold like 1.3. These hold like 1.1 or something. So they're, they're similar, but it's just enough that there might be a little bit less headroom a little bit safer. I am going to leave the cap on my auto siphon. And basically siphoning is very, very simple. Destination lower than the source. Tube in all the way to the bottom. This end goes in here. I go about halfway down so I don't disturb the lease and give it a few pumps to get it going. And then I will hold this close to the bottom, but not exactly on the bottom because I don't like to go fully, fully in there. I want to keep it as clean as, as, clean as I can. Basically, you want to use whatever method you can to cause the least amount of disruption at the very bottom, so that way you get a clearer beverage and less lease. Now, being that this is the first rack, sure, if there's a little bit in there, it's okay. It's going to sit for a week or two anyway, and it will clear out again. But hey, you know, garbage in, garbage out. If you start with a clear beginning, you should have a clear ending. Sure. We do have a full video on how to rack in case this was a little too abbreviated for you. What? All right. So this yeast cake was gorgeous and I wanted to show it to you, but Brian let the, the auto siphon go to the bottom and it messed it all up. It's not going to get used. Yeah, but I wanted to show them how but you didn't tell me that. glorious it was. It was glorious. You're making a mess. I'm making a mess. It's all right. See, everybody thinks I'm the one that makes messes. No, I, really. I am the disaster monkey. Okay. But it's pretty darn good. See, it's just like staying right there. If you do a lot of brews, you'll start to appreciate silly things like a glorious yeast cake. And that was a glorious yeast cake. And now you destroyed it. And I'm sad. It's just lease. So it's now been racked. We're just going to put the airlock back on it and lid first. Take a note. Then what are we going to do with it? We're going to let it sit in the fermentation station for at least a week. Let that clear up a little bit more. We'll be back to show you what it looks like. Kill you, finishing. All right, it's been a long trip, but we finally arrived at a mostly clear beverage that happens to be, oh, I have the note right here. Well, I have no idea what the ABV is. We have a lot of numbers on the paper, ABV not being one. Yeah, let me, uh, let me figure this out for you. And we get 9.72%. All right, so besides our kill you, you may have noticed we have other things on the table. A bunch of stuff. But anyway, this is 9.7%. So here's the thing with kill you. Very little of it actually gets drank in this form. Normally it's like dumped into punch bowls with other fruits and stuff or mixed with Kool-Aid or... That is our understanding. Yeah, there's a lot of rumor and speculation. I've never actually been at one of these events where Kill You is served. So, you know, we're doing the best we can here. I do know that this took far longer than it was supposed to. And generally speaking, they don't even measure anything. They just throw some sugar and water together with a little bit of bread yeast and they make a sugary wash type wine that then they mix with other flavorings. Okay, so we just did a slightly spruced up version. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flavor this using three different things that we happen to have lying around. Let's go with... Uh, so first we're going to use our sanitized baster. To the master baster. To get a sample of Kill You in each of our glasses. Now you're probably wondering, why didn't you bottle this and then do this? Well, we could have. But I figured this is probably more close to the experience that most people really have with this stuff. So I'm just... Yeah, that, that looks like a good sample. Now, in the glass, it is... It looks like water. It does not look like anything. In here, it does have a slight haze, a tint, but in the glass, that looks like water. It doesn't smell like water. So we utilize Google Food to find out what is typically used to mix with Kill You. 
Okay, just just first taste notes on the kill you itself. All right, I gotta cleanse my palate. Sorry. How is your palate not cleansed? It's got that. It's kind of a citrusy. Yeah. Swedish, sweetish, not Swedish. It's a one point zero two zero, so it's got a little bit of sweetness to it. It's not bad, but if I was like young, so young, really young, it well, felt I like think, getting a buzz. I think the prop, the the the. Uh... The demographic is college aged, so that's not underage. That's just probably barely of age. Lacking of of sophistication, mon um, and mon ability to gain. Yeah, they're broke. They're okay, broke. they're college kids. They're broke. All right. So this is not horrible on its own. Now, if it had gone dry, I don't think it would taste very good. This is uh, table tree cherry juice. They are a sponsor, by the way. Yes, and speaking of Table Tree, they have new flavors out just this year. So if you're able to get your hands on the Table Tree and they are expanding their distribution area, then check out their, I think they have like a cherry limeade kind of situation. And another thing that I don't recall, but we love- This was rated the best cherry juice in the world. I we think... actually made um, a cherry chocolate melomel with it and it's- yeah. Amazing. It's it's lovely. I'm gonna put some in here. How much? That much. That much. Maybe a little bit more. I didn't put in a lot. It's like maybe a three or four to one ratio. Are you doing your swirl or are you gonna, doing your chopstick? I'm gonna do the swirl. The chopsticks for later. Alright. It still smells like the kill you. Oh, that is lovely. <laughs> That's just really good. You could drink a lot of that. I see why this is popular, though, because when you take a kind of a neutralish alcohol spirit and you mix flavors in, it's, it becomes too good. I mean, yeah. that's a nine plus. Yeah. Easy on yeah. our scale. That's nuts. Yeah. That's, that's, that should not be. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's Table Tree's fault. There's a, there's a very slight off flavor from the Kill You that I got when I tasted just the straight Kill You that's still present. A little bit more of the juice would probably get rid of it, but we are diluting it. So that 9.7% is probably down to like six now. Sure. You keep going, it'll be lower and lower and lower. But that's not such a bad thing, except that now you're taking in all juice rather than the alcohol. But and that's the good thing slash bad thing about low ABV beverages is that you don't feel the effects right away. So you just keep on drinking. Right. And we'll catch up with you. Okay, next. One of the other suggested flavorings was, I mean, not that cherry was a suggested flavoring, but cherry flavored things was a, was a thing for Kill You. The next suggested flavoring was lemon and honey. So we thought lemon juice, because what self-respecting college kid's gonna have fresh lemons on hand to squeeze in? They're gonna use lemon juice. Apparently in Finland, isn't this, isn't this I, native to Finland? Yeah, it's a Finnish thing. I don't think they grow lemons in Finland. Doesn't mean they can't get them. Sure, but I think lemon juice might be more readily available than actual fresh lemons. Regardless, it's what we had. But I'm not finished, so I don't know, and I might just be talking hypothetically, which I am. We're always talking hypothetically, <laughs> which isn't true. And I just put in a glug of lemon juice, as you saw, and I'm gonna put in a little bit of honey. I don't think this needs as much sweeten sweetening as sometimes it might, because ours did finish finish. Ours did stall at 1020. I have here one, two, three, four, five, six gravity checks for this one. I mean, come on, six, really? I think that's why, like... There's a little bit of angst in my voice? Sure, but also I can just imagine this in its native environment in a dorm room in a college. They would have drank this at the 1050. They're, they're not fine. taking gravity readings. They're just like, I made a thing. Let's drink this yeah. thing. The After like a week, this w went from 1092 to 1054. 1.092 to 1.054. At that point is when most college kids would have been drinking it and they would have been like, this tastes great. And they wouldn't care. They'd have to drink a little bit more, but it's still, I mean, that's still like 6% alcohol. So it's not that bad, really. It's like a, a beer or... Yeah. Most beers are like four and a half. Yeah. So there you go. Okay. Just set that over there because it's sticky now. So this is a little bit of lemon, a little bit of honey. And kill you. And kill you. It smells like a little bit of lemon and a little bit of kill you. Let's 
See, he's trying to do the poker faces. So not not fair. It tastes like alcoholic Sprite. Mm. <laughs> it really does. That's not bad at all. That's up there too. Now, doing this, I can totally see why Kill You is a thing in colleges. It's so versatile. You can do so much with it. Yeah. We're not promoting underage drinking, by the way. In no way, shape, no, or form. No, this is college age. That's not underage. I know Kill You was illegal for a while in Finland, and now it is not, is my understanding. But this is actually really nice. I would, I would make it this way and bottle it and drink this. This is great. Yeah. I mean, so far, all of these... Have... There is still a little bit of an odd twang from the Kill You that I haven't overcome yet. So now... The third thing, we thought, hey, you know, there's so many different ways, you can, but we have all these extracts. So I thought, let's just grab a random extract and flavor it. So give me a second. All right. So here's all of our extracts. <laughs> Do we have a small collection of extracts? Now, included in here is vanilla, peanut butter, pineapple, coconut. And I'm sorry for all the noise. You, I'm, you have to stop moving them if you're going to talk. I wanted to juggle them up. But then they can't hear There's a talk. bunch of stuff in here. One of them is even watermelon, okay? So I'm just going to mix these up. <laughs> Wait, I was saying earlier, we need to make one of those big wheels so we can just spin it and then it'll randomly pick an extract for us. Because that'll be fun and silly. Like us. Hopefully. Cute. We think we're fun and silly. <laughs> Sometimes. Okay. Are you going to use the force? I'm going to use the force. All right, I am the force and the force is with me. I am the force and the force is with me. Bad one. Pure vanilla. All right. Tastes like a cream kill you. It's probably the most boring of all of them that we could have chosen, but hey, we're going to go with it. Don't worry. We can do more. The question always comes, like, how much do you put in? I don't know. Instinct kicks in. Oh, wow. That's on there good. You can tell we use this oh so often. I think that's the one we re like the bean was probably still in there. It's probably a lot. Oh yeah, I put the date on the tape there, so that's how long it's been. Oh, so it's been going for almost a year. There you go. Doesn't really smell any different. Did color it slightly. Do I need to cleanse my palate? No. Either needs more or needs something else. What well, goes with vanilla? Peanut butter. All right, peanut butter is that clear one. Yeah, give me a sec. All right. That that's not good. Okay, um, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not convinced that this is any good. It's just. It's nasty. That's that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Uh, let's see. Where's the peanut butter? Peanut butter is this one. Peanut butter. Peanut butter, chocolate. They go good with uh, vanilla, right? Do we have a chocolate? Wait, no. We have more peanut butter. No, we have more peanut butter. Chocolate. This is the peanut butter we use in our peanut butter porter. It worked incredibly well. So we're making peanut butter vanilla kill you. If I can get the lid back up. Smells like peanut butter now. Not the best. Not not really the best combo. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, drink it. Drink it up. Yeah. See when somebody says, oh. This terrible. smells horrible. Here, yeah. try this. It's like, really? Why? It tastes kind of like peanut butter. A little bit of... It smells like peanut butter. It does. It's not the best of the three. It's not absolutely gross. It was gross before I added the peanut butter. I'm going to go rinse this glass out. I'm I have not, one more. I'm not offended. Really? You like that? Yeah. Right. You may have the rest of it. All right. Got another one. I found this. Found this on the shelf. This is smoking hot honey. Mm. It is basically honey with chilies added to it. It's from the Asheville, Asheville Bee Charmer. Some friends of ours went to Asheville and brought it back for us. Yes. This is from Matt and Kim. Yep. So Matt and Kim, thank you. We have really enjoyed that stuff. Apparently not enough because there's still some left. Well, we, we were actually trying to not use it. That's something I actually should try to do is make a, yeah. like a hot honey hot myself. Honey. Yeah. We, we can got, market it. We have so many chilies out there right now. We, we can market that. 
We you could. Could go to cottage lawn we could, cottage you could actually lawn. sell That's it. Right. City standing hot honey. What do you think? Maybe? Yeah, perhaps. It's a little chunky. It is fantastic on a nice slice of sausage on a cracker. With some cheese. Oh. Well. It's chunky. It is chunky. Before anybody gets offended that I'm not measuring anything, we're trying to just stay true to the way that this would really be done. Yeah. And you know, you do this at home if you want to have a repeatable recipe, go for it. I am the type that I literally will do this all the time. I'll just pour something and go, yeah, let's try a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Unfortunately, when it comes out amazing, I don't have any idea what it took. Well, our first kill you wasn't... I mean a, food, everything. ...wasn't a traditional kill you. It right. was the Franklin, the Mojito kill you, that our friend Adam, our friend slash admin, I, I'm, I'm bumping him from admin to friend. I don't know if that's a upgrade or downgrade. <laughs> anyway, he made this Mojito kill you. And we're like, we totally want to make that. And he says, okay. And so we did. And we named it the Franklin because that's... That's his an, name. An ode to him. Uh, but then we're like, no, we need to stop fancifying. Yeah, a couple kill of people you. got offended. Like, a couple of Finns got offended by this. And we're sorry. We did not mean to offend. We, we think your concept of this sugar wash base is fantastic and it has so many different things that we can do with it and so now we're like okay let's let's try to be as true as not being non-fin people <laughs> as we can to a traditional finnish dr beverage and, and so that's why we did this and then we're adding things to it because that is our understanding of what is traditionally done if you have if you are Finnish and you have worked with Kill You and you have your favorite combination, please let us know in the comments below so that way we can share that information with our audience and they can experience a true Finnish tradition of enjoyment of Kill You. You make it sound like it's some high class. It thing. doesn't. It doesn't. It's not supposed to be high class. It doesn't matter. It's a traditional thing. It's it's a heritage thing. And. Class, oh, I got something to come out. Class has nothing to do with it. All right. Apparently, we should have thought about this a little bit before using this. I saw it on the shelf. I mean, eh, let's do it. Yeah. It's very crystallized, making it difficult to get it out. Looks like you got a good enough. Good enough. Yeah. Amount. We'll see. I tried it already once. It wasn't great. It's okay. You're making a face. It smells honey. It smells spicy. It's not great. Do you know what's missing? Banana. Sausage. <laughs> Same that kind of show. <laughs> Banana. That's what's missing. Oh, you want me to do a different one? Yeah, I'm not in this. We're not doing a spicy banana. It's not spicy. Spicy banana? I mean, spicy. All right, so a little banana extract. It's got a lovely color. That's not a lovely color. <laughs> it looks radioactive. Whoa. Whoops. You got it overactive with your swirl. You need your... No, here, use this one. Looks rather like the byproduct of drinking too much. No, it's it's beyond that. It's radioactive. That's like... I put a battery in the bottom of the glass. That's like nuclear waste. Yeah, that's crazy. Smells like those banana candies. I need a cleanser here. I feel like I should be eating crackers at this time. <laughs> it smells like banana pudding. It does. <laughs> which, which, in my opinion, isn't a bad thing. Mm. Doesn't taste like banana pudding. You like it? I'm assuming you don't. Not really. <clears throat> Give me another glass. Let me try something else. The end was was painful. Okay, these glasses are all contaminated. So either I'll, want, I'll rinse it out. Oh. Peach. I think this was the cherry remnants. Am I rinsing it? Fair enough. Yeah, the banana, I don't know. I don't think I'd do that. So far, the cherry is the best one, but the honey lemon the honey is lemon actually was really nice. nice, too. You know, and this is kind of just a cool thing to be able to do. You just sit, sit down and take some flavorings out and pour some stuff in a glass and try it out. And I'm more ho hopeful for this because the All of Nation extracts are actually yeah. honest-to-goodness ingredients where... Well, this is the one that made me like peach mead. Right, where the other ones that we got from the Asian store are... They're a little... Yeah. Questionable, ingredient-adjacent type scenario. Uh, it's a stirring stick of some, some type. 
Do you want me to sanitize that or? Nope. It's not going to go into long term storage. Sure. I just don't know what. Speaking of, we should probably just put the lid back. That's why I keep trying to put it on there. But... <laughs> this is tasting number, I don't even know what. 17. <laughs> Okay, this smells vaguely of peach. <clears throat> peach. All right, I gotta close my. It's so far not unpleasant. I actually, I like this. Not bad. Not as great as I was hoping for. Mm. It needs more sweetness. That one needs more sweetness. You know what? We can do that. Give me, give me, give me. We just happen to have the means to make it sweeter. So if you haven't noticed this, and I know Adam, my friend, has noticed this, everything I drink. I tend to swirl in my mouth. She I mean, chews them too. I chew everything. It's just obnoxious. And so that was fine initially, but as I was doing the the whiskey chew, I think is the technical term, but whatever. Tennessee chew. Kentucky uh, chew. Something. I don't know. I do that. And when I did that, it turned from okay to not okay. See, I tasted that right away. <laughs> I think the peach flavor needs a lot of sweetness to really taste good. This is also a great way to test out various flavorings to see what you like. I kind of imagine this being the scenario at a college party with a, a jar of kill you. I so would be the just, mixologist. They yeah. just, they're like, oh, I brought this juice, I brought this juice, I brought this juice. And they just mix it yeah. and keep drinking until they, they pass out or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, his face was poker, but his hand over was not. It was very telling. Are you Sherlock Holmes now, all of a mm -hmm. sudden? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. really nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The peach needed some sweetness. So, what we're getting at is, the sky's the limit. We have an alcoholic base that you can build from. Is this true homebrewing? Questionably. This is true homebrewing. Yeah. And but this is just fun. The point is that it's your brew. It's your uh, creation at the end of the day. So if you like it and you didn't hurt anybody in the making of it and it's not dangerous, you didn't do anything wrong. A couple of people have seemed to have a problem with extracts or doing this, adding flavors and conditioning rather than in primary. I used to be like that. And I came to realize that Control, precision, and repeatability are very important things. Just let it go. Just yeah. let it go. If you try to overshoot the uh, alcohol tolerance of a mead ev or, a, or a wine or a cider every time to get that level of sweetness, you're going to be disappointed because it's going to vary. Yeast can't read. They don't know what they're supposed to do. So they do what they do based on their situation. Sometimes they'll overshoot by a lot, sometimes not as much. But if you go dry every time and you sweeten to taste, now you know how sweet it's going to be because you sweeten to taste. This is another example of that kind of thing. We have an alcohol base, and now you can add flavor in any form that you want to taste and make a creation that is uniquely yours that you like. It's... Not something I want to do every day. Don't get me wrong. It, this is definitely not even something that I would probably do often or even. But seldom. you also have the option of keeping the kill you, like bottling the kill you, did just you straight. Finish all those glasses. I, I did. Just bottling the kill you, just straight as it is, and that way you can you have flavor on the wind, on the variety wind. whenever you want. Yeah, it's kind of like a deconstructed cocktail. <laughs> best way I can describe it. Because that way you can add whatever you want to it. Like, I can see maybe throwing this in with a little bit of sparkling water and some ice cubes and a little bit of fruit juice, and you have a really interesting, like, spritzer type of thing. So the range of what you can do with this is actually really amazing. Now, I just want to point something else out. If you had just a basic mead, you could do almost the exact same thing. But you're adding a different flavor with the honey. This came up recently on, uh, on some comments. I don't want to make this video... You know, I always say I don't want to make a one-hour behemoth, but most of our videos are 43 minutes to an hour. You know, it's just the way it is. And if you're still watching, you already know this. But they were talking about making a mead without honey. Well, you can't. It's not mead. But I want to, and this is a big caveat, that doesn't mean you're wrong, and it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. If you want to make a sugar wine and add honey to this to give it a honey-like, a mead-like flavor, you're fine. Just don't tell, don't tell people it's mead. 
and you may enjoy that more than an actual mead. And that's totally cool. Honey's expensive, we get it, sugar's cheap. So however you end up getting to where you want to be is the way you need to do it. Totally cool with all of that. But don't say I made a mead and then I ask for a recipe and, it, and you say I used two pounds of sugar. Well, then you didn't make mead. And I know it's a naming thing, but if I called everything Steve, you would have no idea what I was making. So we have to have some amount of naming or else cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.